A lady by the name of Thanam Chakapak developed a really tasty hot sauce around about 80 years ago. Her friends and family loved it and suggested she should be marketing it to the public and she did so and promptly it became the most popular hot sauce in Thailand. She came from a small town called Siracha and that was the original Siracha hot sauce. I've been working on my own recipe based on the sriracha flavors, only quite a bit hotter. And today's sauce is going to be the fourth evolution of this sauce and hopefully the one that I'm most happy with. So let's get started. First things first, we need to prepare our fermentation. What we have here are some beautiful peppers from our garden that we just freshly picked. We have some garlic that we've peeled and prepared. We have some beetroot as well, mainly to add color, but also because we need that for the sugars. I don't want uh, pure sugar in here for the fermentation phase because it will ferment too quickly. And that's not really what you're looking for here. You want a bit of a slow fermentation. So that's going to provide the sugar for the initial part. We're going to be adding more sugar later, uh, but for now, this is all we need. And over here, we have our salt. First things first, before we can figure out how much salt we need, we need to measure out all these ingredients and see how much they weigh. I'm just going to roughly chop them, just so not as bulky inside here. That's 138 grams of poblano. These here are burnt the chilies, but if you want, you can use things like cayenne or even some of the other bacatums. I'm just going to use some of these burnt the chilies because this is what I had. Basically, you want a pepper that is somewhat sweet, but also has a bit of a spice. That's 55 grams. And then finally, the main spice we have here is our saffy red scotch bonnets these are not uh not to be played around with they are quite spicy they're not as super hot but they definitely are going to add a lot more spice than your typical sriracha and we have 117 grams garlic and beetroot so garlic we have it's about seven cloves eight cloves but it comes up to 18 grams. And finally, the beetroot. A nice purple beetroot is best because you want to maintain this really rich red color, which we're going to get from this. And that is just a medium sized beetroot, but this one weighs 74 grams. We have 394 grams of total ingredients, and that means we need about 3% of that in terms of salt. The next part is the easy part, but basically we just need to add this all inside the jar. Let me just start with blending that up and then we'll add more when we have more space. Let's add some more peppers. Should be able to get the rest in here now. Oh, I can smell the heat of these scotch bonnets. Wow. <coughs> There we have it. Look at that beautiful color, that deep, deep red. It's more purple than a red, but it still looks good to me. So now I just need to figure out how much is in here because we need to find a jar that's gonna be big enough. I have a feeling that that will be okay. So let's get it in there and start the fermentation. Just make sure you clean around the lid and anywhere they might have splashed and uh, we're ready to get the lid on. And for the airlock, I'm just going to use some saline solution or some uh, brine, essentially. Just another 3% brine. Okay. 
and we close that up. We're going to stick that inside the Ferminator and leave that for the next three to four weeks and we'll be ready to finish the source off. It's been just over a month and here we have our lovely fermented sriracha. Well, it's most of the way there. We've got a few things to do to it still and we're going to do that right now. So let's first have a look inside here and see how it's done over the last month and a bit. It looks pretty good. You can see a little bit of calm yeast on the top there. I'm going to skim that off. There's not a lot in there. And you can see it is calm. It's just the way it's situated. You can see it comes off in like a little chunks. Oh. Remember, you have got beetroot in here, so you don't want it staining things. So I need to take that off the cutting board quickly. There we go. Well, that's that's it. The rest of it looks pretty good to me. So let me just clean that up. It's time to give it a bit of a smell. Oh, smells good. The remaining ingredients that we're going to be adding here are right over here. The first thing is some distilled white vinegar. That's going to be about 25% of the total here. There is some fish sauce. Now this is somewhat optional, but I think it really adds a decent flavor. It's, it's more about the umami flavors that the fish sauce brings. But if you aren't a fan of fish sauce or you maybe a vegetarian, then you might want to leave that out. But this is going to go into my sauce. And then lastly, we need some more garlic. I'm going to go in with two cloves here because this is quite large garlic. If you are using medium sized garlic, then you can go with maybe three or maybe even four cloves. I might end up adding more. It just depends on how this tastes once I process it. Let's pour this into there. Oh, that lovely rich color. It's maybe a little bit too purple for my liking. But it adds something a little bit different to the other sriracha sauces out there. So I can see here that this is just over 300 milliliters inside the jar. And uh, there's probably another 10 or 20 milliliters of the sauce in here that we'll get out once we uh, mix it up with the vinegar. But a third of that is around about 100 mils. I'm going to go about 125 milliliters. And uh, we'll see how that works with consistency. So the way I'm going to do this, I'm just going to measure it on the scale. 125 grams is close enough to 125 milliliters. While we're at it, we might as well add the fish sauce. So I'm going to zero this out again. And we're going to be adding about 15 milliliters of fish sauce. Just be careful. Some fish sauces are stronger than others. And uh, <laughs> it can overwhelm the flavors if you just go too heavy on it. So... There we go, that's 15 milliliters, which is, again, roughly 15 grams. And that's going to go straight in. And then the last thing is the garlic. There is one more ingredient I'm going to be adding right at the end, and that's an emulsifier. But first, we need to just make sure that the flavors are what we want it to be. So let's give it a try. I realized that there's something missing, <laughs> and it's one of the core ingredients. I can't believe I've forgotten that. Uh, we need to add sugar. So the sugar, the sweetness is really going to offset some of the flavors here. The, the balance is way off to the one side at the moment. And we need to bring it back to the middle 
cooking is all about balance making sauces especially is all about balance the flavors here are spot on the heat is pretty phenomenal but it does need that sugar just to balance it all out the sugar i'm going to be using is brown sugar if you can get hold of palm sugar that'll be ideal but i'm just using brown sugar if you are maybe diabetic or you're on a low carbohydrate diet then of course you can substitute for an artificial sweetener i would suggest something like erythritol that's a decent one but uh, if you don't have a problem with sugar then you can use some of this brown sugar or palm sugar so for the amount that we've got here we're going to be doing one tablespoon this is a half tablespoon measure so let's uh try that see how we like the sweetness i might need to add a bit more i'll just have to uh, give it a test so we go nicely mixed up let's give that another try The heat level here is actually pretty good for me. I think though for some people, especially that are used to sriracha and maybe want a bit of a hotter one, this is still going to be a little bit too hot for them. And the way that people use sriracha, it's kind of like a catch-up to them. This is definitely not something you'd use as a catch-up. The spice is pretty evident. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dilute it a little bit further with about 50 milliliters of distilled vinegar. So that'll bring the total to about 180 ml of vinegar. One other thing I'm going to add is one more garlic clove. I really like it garlicky and this just just isn't garlicky enough for me. We're going to add a little bit more sugar as well, another half tablespoon. Lastly, we're going to add just a little bit of xanthan gum to hold it all together so it doesn't separate. I'm going to use an eighth of a teaspoon for this amount. So we're going to give that one more final taste test and we'll see what we think. Well, there we go. Mmm. Mmm, that's good. It's not an instant heat, it builds slowly, but you've got that sweetness, you've got the, the tang of the vinegar, and obviously a little bit of the fish sauce coming through. I think it was a good idea to add a bit more vinegar. It brought the flavor of the fish sauce down a little bit. I think I added a little bit too much initially, but um, I think that mix really works well. You've just got that hint of the fish sauce, and it's not very fishy, so if you're worried about that, if you've never used fish sauce before, it's, it's it's obviously very fishy on its own but when you mix it into the sauce like that and the amount that i used it just it really adds a nice umami flavor to it i'm happy with that i think i've got my recipe nailed down those few extra additions right at the end there um, you obviously have to taste your sauces as you go along the fundamentals i knew i'd gotten right uh, the first time i did this i went a little bit too heavy on the pure heat this time I brought the heat down a little bit uh, by mixing some sweet peppers as well and that made all the difference. And then it's the, the, the little additions at the end, you know, the sugar getting that balance right with the spice as well as the acidity because you obviously have quite a lot of acidity anyway in the fermentation and then the vinegar adds a bit more as well. And then finally that fish sauce for that umami flavor and all that comes together just beautifully. And that's obviously not to mention the garlic, which goes great in everything, doesn't it? There are plenty of sriracha recipes out there. And the one that you're probably most familiar with is the one from David Trans, the uh, rooster sauce. 
the one with the picture of the roost on the front and the green squeezy top. This sauce is not going to taste exactly like that. It's definitely a lot hotter and it will taste very familiar to you if you are used to eating sriracha. So uh, it at least, you know, it's at least sticking to the general concept of sriracha sauce. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I look forward to showing you a lot more recipes in the future. I've got so many going on at the moment in the Ferminator that uh, I'm really excited to show you guys. This one here obviously is a small batch. I was just trying to get the recipe right. This here is only about 600 milliliters, so it wouldn't really be fair for me to bottle this up and sell 150 ml bottles of this because there'd be like four of them. This one here is for me, for my family. Make sure you let me know in the comments below if you do try and make this yourself. I want to hear how it turned out for you, but I'm happy with this and I'm definitely going to be making a much bigger batch of this next year. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next video. And until then, stay spicy.